morning. And we want to thank you and welcome you here to Good News Christian Center Church where Jesus is Lord. And do remember, we're here on Wednesday for our weekday Bible study at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. So we'd like to invite you to like, share, do what it takes to help get the word out. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started with prayer. Father, we thank you again for another day that you have made and we have decided that we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you that you have blessed us to be able to come into this place, to call upon you, to look to you, to worship you. Lord God, because you're not just our source, you're our only source. Now, Father, as the word come forth, Lord God, I pray and ask that it pierce the heart of the hearer, and they shall be transformed into doers. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We've been talking on a topic, the drought is over. And um, in this topic, what, it, what I had, I, I've been even preaching to myself. Uh, things that I hadn't even seen have come forth. We have to, in, in all that we do, really look to God because there's no other way. There's no other way. Sometimes you go so far and sometimes the enemy wants you to, to really cash in, to, to give up. It ain't happening for you. Well, it happened. For, did it happen for anybody else? That's all I need to know. Yeah. Did it happen for anybody else? Listen, I'm talking about a saint or a sinner. Did it happen for anybody else? Yes. Now say this with me. Why not me? Why not me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I like that. Why not me? See, God have no respect of person. He has respect of principle. He said he reigned on the just as well, so the unjust, but I'd rather be the just. He said, I said before you life and death, choose life. So I'd rather be the just. We're going to get started here. Let us um, go over to Hebrews. That's where we kind of was. It was, it was beyond that, but I want, that's where I want to go. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, because see, as I said, as this thing is, it, there's a distance between I believe I receive and there it is. There's a distance, there's a time span there, there's a preparation there. And, and God wants you to, somebody to stand the test of time. Yeah, because it should try you. It will try you and you have to be willing to stand regardless of how it look, how it feel, presently really, because the enemy is doing everything he can to get you to walk away. So I ain't going nowhere till I get it. <laughs> just putting him on alert in case he got somewhere else he want to go and work <laughs> he can move on I'm not doing it I trust in God he has the final say and he is my God Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 he's a cast not away therefore your confidence why which have great recompense of reward so he just told me there, somebody said, it's coming. It's a set time. It's a set time. For ye have need of patience. See, when it comes to patience, people think patience is just waiting until it's up. Uh-uh. There's preparation in patience. That's why he don't move you too fast. There's preparation. And you have to make sure that in that preparation that you receive everything God has for you on this level. So when you get up here, you don't have to come back here. Why would you come back here? Because you missed something down here. So you got to grow as you go. You don't want to just go up. You want to grow up as you go up. And as you grow up, when you go up, what do you do? You strengthen yourself. Yeah. Well, God strengthen you. He give you what you need and you get a chance to experience the thing you need to experience. So when you get there, you can support your area good. See, some people be put in position and they ain't ready for them. Yeah. I find a lot of that in nepotisms on jobs. Uh, my friend cousin said that, you know, they had another cousin friend who was their uncle, brother, mama, sisters, kin folks. And then when they, by the time they get to the end, all characters lost. There's no qualification even in the resume no more. And now you're in a place where you got somebody operating in a place that they don't know what they're doing, and then they don't want to get no training for what they're doing. I advise anybody, if you rise up to a new area on your job, you begin to ask for some classes to support you there. You need it. You might have come there, but you need help. You need help, see? And if you don't get that help, you're gonna end up back where you came from. But I'm gonna tell you something. When God promotes you, I said when God promotes you, yes, yes. nobody can take you down. See, that's how you know a lot of time it wasn't God in the promotion, because people have to come back down. He said, God said, he said, I take it down one, come on, and I put it up another. 
If you voted in, you could be voted out. But when God promotes you, see the Bible said promotion don't come from the east nor the west. Promotion comes from the Lord. See, and when that happens, you don't have to be moved. You take uh, uh, Joseph during his time of incarceration. Joseph had interpreted to the butler, the butler and, the, and the butcher, I believe it was, the baker. And uh, he told him, said, uh, listen, about this time tomorrow, <laughs> you gonna, your head going to be cut off. You know that man didn't want to hear that. And I'm sure it was on Joseph, should I tell him this? Because that's a, that's a hard thing. Tell the man about this time tomorrow, you're you going to be beheaded. And he told him, he said, and you going to be stored back to your regular position. Now, this is Joseph. So somebody said he worked in this gift. And it was given by God. God gave him that. Now, and these things came to pass. But as the, the, the baker, I mean, the butler was on his way out. See, he didn't say nothing to the, to the butcher because he was, he was going, you know, he was going to be headless. He wasn't going to be able to communicate with Pharaoh no more. So he told the baker, he said, the butler, he said, uh, when you get up there, tell Pharaoh that I'm down here. See, this is called self-promotion, you know, or nepotism. It all fits in the same category. Tell Pharaoh that I'm down here and tell him that I can interpret dreams because I just did you. That was a way to promote itself. The Bible said when he got up there, he went blank. The Bible said it was another whole two years before God got ready to promote him. See, now he had it. Now, I understand. Somebody tell you something like that, and you going back to your glory. When you translate the message, I got to tell this guy, he helped me out. See, but it wasn't God's promotion. It was Joseph trying to promote himself. And the Bible said it was another whole two years. And when God got ready to promote Joseph, watch this. I'm going to say it like this and paraphrase. He took down all of Pharaoh's musicians, magicians. He put them down. No knowledge. They could not interpret the dream. Watch this. And the butler said, there's a Hebrew. I am what I am. <laughs> He's down in prison and he can interpret dream. Pharaoh said, go get him. I'm telling you, when you wait on God, somebody's coming to get you. You, you. you wait on God for your promotion. Don't take the promotion of this world. Wait on God. He said, I take it down one and I put it up another. When God put you there, you don't have to be moved by the circumstance, by the circumstances, nor the situation. God put you there. And that shield of faith will protect you. See? And nobody can pull you down. I don't care what they say, what they do. See, because see, God puts you there. I've been in positions I knew myself. I said, they can't move me until I get ready to be moved. They do, don't care what they say. What they said they were going to do, I, it don't, really don't matter. God placed me. And they can't. See, when, you, when you're covered by the blood, the enemy can't do you no harm. He cannot. So Joseph tried to promote himself, which a lot of folks do. And they get, they get, they, they get by with it, but they don't get away with it. Let me say this. They get by with it because it's only going to last for a while, but they don't get away with it. And when God got ready to promote Joseph, he gave Pharaoh a dream that none of his position, his magician could interpret. And that's when the butler remembered there's a Hebrew down in jail. They said, go get him. Change his clothes. God's going to change the countenance on your face. Let me say that again. God's going to even change the countenance on your face. When he get ready, see that. But Joseph had to allow that time of preparation in patience to take place. Oh, it'll take place. Time will reveal anything. And when God got ready, he, he, he promoted Joseph. And he stayed there for years. And then all of a sudden they say a Pharaoh came who knew not Joseph. But watch this. He wasn't left, left empty handed. He still had something to walk with. They said there's so many. Let us deal with them. How? wisely. <laughs> they still had to negotiate with him because he was placed there by God. God has the final say. The drought is over. <laughs> the drought is over. God has the final say. I'm telling you, you just got to trust him. Let's go back to the Hebrew. He said, cast not away therefore your confidence, which have great recompense of reward, for ye have need of patience. Work it out. Wait it out. That after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive 
the promise. For yet a little while, because it don't seem like it's turning. But for yet a little while, and he that shall come, will come. Come on. And will not tarry. Listen. Listen. He's for yet in a little while. He that shall come, will come. And there'll be no more delay. You got to put yourself in that place that you're receiving all that God has for you. See, sometimes we get in positions and, and things begin to happen so terrible. We say, this ain't God. <laughs> didn't he put you there? He didn't. When, when he called, when he gave Joseph the dream, he never told Joseph the things that he was going to encounter to get to where he had placed him. He never told him that. If he had it, he might have refused. He told him that you're going to be thrown in the pit. Where? In the pit. I ain't going to call this trip off. He God never tell you what you're going to go through. But he called you to it. Watch this. He'll see you through it. I don't care where they put you. I say I don't care what they do to you. I don't care how they treat you. If God call you to it, he's going to see you through it. And you got to be willing to stand the test of time. You got to be willing to stand the test. It takes that to get you there. Verse 38. It said, now the just shall live by faith. The who? The just, the just will keep on believing. Yes. Regardless of what happened. But if any man draw back, my soul, come on, shall have no pleasure in him. He's not pleased with you when you do that. The Bible said without faith, come on, it's impossible to please God. So one of the greatest things you can do, please God, is walk by faith. Walk by faith. I understand he said, be ye holy, for I am holy. But faith makes you holy because you're trusting him. And when them, watch this, when people are believing God for something, they cut off any and everything that could hinder them. Don't tell me faith won't make you holy. You get to believe in God for something. Anything that could hinder you, you say, no, I ain't doing that. I ain't going there. I don't want, I tell them I ain't here. And you're lying all the time. <laughs> I'm telling you, anything that could hinder you, when you believe in God, people watches it closely. But you see, that's working their faith. They don't want nothing to hinder them. So anything that might can hinder them, they make sure they, uh, 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 I'm not going to I'm not going to call them. I'm not taking that call. I'm just simply not taking it. Somebody looking for you, I, okay, all right. I don't want to see them. You may not tell them, but that's the way you really feel because you know what's coming out of there. And you want to make sure that you got it. Now, I want to read this out to you out of the NLT. The then NLT say, says, reads, so do not throw away this confident, this confident trust in the Lord. Do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings. It brings you patience. Endurance is what you need now. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. For in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay. And my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. I take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. You got to be willing to go on because sometimes I'm going to tell you, when you're walking by faith, sometimes it looks like this thing just ain't working. But stay at the ham of the ship. Stay right there. Don't, don't you be moved. See, you, you, you can get distracted. Things will distract you. You know, so I mean, just uncommon thing. But, you know, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's over in James, I believe. Uh, somebody help me preach this morning. I'm giving you permission. Uh, where he said, think it not strange uh, that these fiery trials came to try you. Uh, somebody know what I'm talking about? Uh, First Peter 4 and 12. Okay, okay. We were next door to James then. Well, we was in the neighborhood. First Peter 4 and 12. He said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange things happen to you. I want to read that, I believe, out of the message also. Uh, the message, uh, that's First Peter 4 and 12. It says here, friends, when life get really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God is not on the job. Instead, be glad that you're in the very thick of what Christ experienced. 
You're just going through what he went through. <laughs> this is a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner. <laughs> See, the enemy wants you to think God has turned away and he ain't doing what he promised to do. But you're in the very thick of what Christ did. The Bible says if we suffer with him, we shall also come on, reign with him. And you got to know that these things are going to happen. So think it not strange that some fiery trial came to try you. Don't think it's strange. It's common. The Bible said what you're going through, your brother all over the world is going through the same thing. So don't thank you all of that. And you don't have to face that. <laughs> so why not me? <laughs> See, when, they get, when it gets tough, we don't want to acknowledge that. But why not me? You're no different than anyone else. We're all subject. Even though I confess, I'm exempt. <laughs> I said, as for me and my house, we're exempt. You got to be in that place where you just continue to trust God. Don't be moved by what the enemy is trying to do. Now go with me to Zechariah <clears throat> chapter 4. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 4. <clears throat> my goodness. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Come on, not by might, <clears throat> nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Okay. So he said, This thing is going to happen. It's not going to be by might, nor by power, meaning nothing else out there can help you. You're going to have to trust God here. He said, But come on, by my spirit. Nothing else is going to cause it to happen. So here, here this tells me I'm going to have to get right with God. Because <laughs> it ain't going to happen no other way. See, I'm a mock man. Nothing else is going to work for me. You better get this. Nothing else is going to work for me. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to trust God all the way in this thing. I can't go halfway leaning on him, then try to grab it and run it by myself. Uh-uh. You're going to have to stay with God all the way. You're going to have to stay with God all the way. No other way it's going to happen. He said, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Uh, uh, the message Bible, let me see here. It says, these things only come out, come, come by my might and my power, his spirit. They only come about through my spirit, says God of the angel armies. So now, watch what he said. He said, they only come about through his spirit. So might, power, nepotism, nothing outside the realm of God will cause it to happen. If it do, it ain't going far. It might get by, but it's not getting away. He said, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. And that's what you're going to have to trust, the spirit of God. You're going to have to trust the Holy Ghost. That's the only way it's going to happen, because I'm going to tell you some things. It seems like sometimes it's going under. Uh-uh, but you're about to go up and over. You can't be moved by what you see. You're going to have to trust God. See, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God, watch this, and his righteousness, meaning his way of doing it, and all these things shall be what? Added unto you. You're going to get it right with God. You're going to be in right standing with him. And once you get in right standing with him, nothing can stop you. He told Joshua, no man, he said, as I said unto Moses, no man, She'll be able to stand before you some of your days. All your days. Somebody says, I own now. Because I just got a word that's telling me that I'm unstoppable. Regardless to the hurdles that may be placed before me, I'm unstoppable. All I have to do is stay under the umbrella of protection. Somebody said, God's got me. I'm telling you, he's got you and you just got to stay right there and trust him. I'm going to show you something, what he said, if you don't. Look over to um, Isaiah chapter 30. <sighs> Isaiah chapter 30. Hmm. Hold up. Hold. You, you, did you turn from there yet? Let me, let me finish reading where I was. Then we'll go over there. Isaiah chapter 30. Uh, uh, Zechariah 4 and 6, it said, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, 
saying, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Then he spoke. So who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel. He said, I don't care how big you are. Who are you? Who are you? Oh, great mountain. So in great, it had to be large. Whatever the problem may be, God's got you. Oh, great mountain before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, meaning knocked down flat. And he shall bring forth the headstone. thereof was shouting, crying, grace, grace unto it. Now, go, go more, verse 8. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of, the, of this house, and his hands, come on, shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who have despised the day of small things? And one translation says small beginnings. Uh, we went last week over to Job where he said, Though thy beginning was small, yet thy greater end, thy latter end shall greatly increase. Yes. Thy latter end, let's go over there. What was that, Job chapter, was that Job 8? Or was it just, oh, glory to God. Yeah, Job chapter 8. Let's, let's start at verse 6. Job 8 and 6. It's if thou were appearing upright, surely now he would awake for thee, for thee. And he doesn't tell him, Job, if you were right with him, he'd get up for you. <laughs> and make thy habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. Though thy beginning was small, though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end, come on, shall greatly increase. He didn't say a little, shall greatly increase. See, God is trying to get you there, but he's going to do it through patience. You have to accept the things. See, Job, Job never changed. That's why Satan chose him. Still, God, he just worships you to get the stuff. Uh-uh, God said, that's my man. That's what you want God to say about you. That's my man. <laughs> God allowed Satan to attack Job's body, but he said, touch not his soul. Job stood through it. Job even had to correct his friends during that time. He had to correct his wife. Job had to, somebody said he had to hold his place. He had to keep the course. See, because sometimes people grow weak and they begin to give into it. Job never gave into it. He never gave into it. He stayed with it. The Bible said his body was like skin and bone. Could you imagine skin hanging on bone? But Job kept the faith. See, now watch it. I like this. I was studying the other morning. I ran across and I hadn't seen it in a long time. Job made the statement, the Lord knoweth the way I take. <laughs> Say he know me like that. <laughs> Lord, I thank you. You know me like that. I'm telling you, Job said the Lord knoweth the way I take. And God, I'm sure God was smiling, saying, that's my boy. That's what you want God to say. That's my guy. That's what you want God to say about you. But he's going to only do it through your faith walk. You standing in faith even when you're in the midst of adversity. You still trust in God. You still believe in God. You're not moved. Listen, you're about to see one of the greatest waves of glory that you've ever seen in your life. Let me say that again. You're about to see one of the greatest waves of glory that you've ever seen in your life. It's been trickling since last year. When cometh the flood? <laughs> when come, you, you can put a date on that. Was coming to flood. I was also uh, uh, talking with some guys as a night, me and my son, and I was telling them about over in Ezekiel when he talked about he went around to the front gate, uh, the east gate, and the water was around his ankles. So I, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing here. Now he went around to the, to the I want to say the west side, I could be a little off, but it's in this scripture. Let it get itself right. He went around to the other side, I believe it was the west side, and it was up to his knees. He went around to the south side, it was up to his neck. He said, but when he went to the north gate, Lord have mercy, where God is, he can only swim. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's about to get deep. Because see, the deep calleth unto the deep. Are you ready to swim? That's what you're going to have. It's time to walk in this thing like never before. And listen, I'm solid because I'm trusting the word. I'm trusting the word. You know, you know, the word made the water solid for Peter. When Peter says, that be thou, bid me to come. The water 
made the word solid and Peter walked on it. Somebody said, I'm about to walk on it. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to ride in it. I'm going to live in it. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy in it. I mean, this is what he put you here for. God put us here to dominate. That's what he put us here. He gave, he said, let us make man our likeness, image, and our kind, and give them what? Did he say work for it? He said give them dominion. He put you here to dominate these things that's dominating you. Oh, glory. But when they come, I'm going to tell you, I dare you to stay. If you stand, you're going to break through. If you bend, you're going to bow. Let me say that again. If you stand, you're going to break through. If you bend, you're going to bow. Now, he was talking, I was on the point. He was talking about not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We said, let's go over to Isaiah chapter what, 30? Yeah, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 30. Because, see, he spoke to those who would not trust that. Look over in Isaiah chapter 30. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Isaiah chapter 30. See, God knows some of everybody. See, Jesus made the statement to those Jews who believed on him. Them he gave, come on, power. Because he knew something was going to rebel. Look at Isaiah chapter 30 and look at verse 1. It said, whoa. Anybody know what whoa means? Ooh, we. You know, when we was kids, it was nine of us, and somebody did something, if somebody hollered, ooh, we, somebody was in trouble. <laughs> Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, that take counsel. Watch this, that take counsel, but not of me. That's who he's talking to, but take counsel, but not of me. And that cover with covering, but not of my spirit. Under the covering of somebody who's wicked unrighteous. This is who he's talking to the rebellious. And he's really calling them out. That they may add, come on, sin to sin. Because see, you can't get right when you're on unrighteous covering, when you listen to someone who's outside of God's counsel. You can't, it, listen, it can't help but get worse. How are you going to build a house on a bad foundation? It's going to someday have to crumble. According to the scripture, verse 2, that walk to go down into Egypt. See, that's where they trust is in Egypt. And have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in strength of Pharaoh, in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. See, he told Joseph, he said, go not down into Egypt. But watch this. Am I saying it right? Another one, Joseph, Isaac, pardon me. He told Isaac, go not down into Egypt. Because Isaac knew it was good down there. But that's the world's way. He didn't want him. He wanted him to teach him. But go into a land that I shall tell thee of and sow there and sojourn there. And the Bible said the same year. The same year because he obeyed God the same year. He received what? A hundredfold. And the Lord did what? Greatly increased him. Because he didn't go down. See, folks still trusting in this world system. You got to get out of trusting in this world system and trust God. Now, don't get, don't get it twisted. Your job is of the world, sister, but God can use that, but make sure he called you to it. Make sure he called you to it. Listen, and you'll know he called you to it because your arrival is going to be like nobody else. <laughs> your arrival is going to be like when, 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 uh, when, when uh, Rebecca, was it Rebecca that saw Isaac? Or Isaac saw Rebecca. He said, who is that? That's how your arrival is going to be. They're going to be, who is that? You're going to be God sent. I said, you're going to be God said. Yeah. Your treatment's going to be different from anybody else's treatments. They're going to be wanting to know, how, how did he get all of that? See, watch this. Just like when he told Isaac to, to go not down into Egypt, but to the land I tell you of, the Bible said, and the Philistine did what? Envied him. him. They got jealous. Yeah. They about to get jealous of you. But can you handle it? Yes. Can you handle it? Yes. Let me tell you something about jealousy. No, I ain't going to tell you nothing about it. I'm going to tell you what the Bible said about it. <laughs> the Bible said jealousy is as cruel as the grave. <laughs> I'm telling you, say, get ready. You're about to see one of the greatest waves of glory that you've ever seen in your life. You've got to come to the place where you trust God in this thing. Sometimes people just been thinking, is it really true? Yes, it is. But they don't want to go through the preparation to get you there. I'm willing. Because he said, if you be willing, come on, and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Ah, glory to God. Verse 2 again. It said, that walk to go down into Egypt 
and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Verse three, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt be your confusion. See, God said he's not in the midst of confusion. When you trust in these things, they're going to bring you shame and confusion. You're not going to even be able to make a decent decision. Your decision is going to be off because, see, you trusted in Pharaoh's system. You trusted in his world system. You're going to trust God. I know the way of God seems to be hard, but it's fair. Yes, amen. All had to come that way. So you're going to have to just make up your mind. I'm going to trust God. What the song said, I sought the Lord. Come on now. And he heard me. Come on. And he answered me. This is what he's saying here. You're going to have to seek him. He's going to hear you and he's going to answer you. Oh, I like that song when I said, man, I just I just get like a little boy. I go to I go to weeping when I hear that. Sometimes I'll be driving. I have to catch the wheels. Help me, Lord. I mean, I sought the Lord. Here's what gets me so happy. He heard me. Now, let me tell you what makes me so excited about when I say he heard me. First John. 515 said, if I know, yes. glory to God, he hears me, whatever, <laughs> whatever I requested of him. Somebody said, access granted. <laughs> you you got to put yourself in it. When you know these things, you can rejoice over these things. But when you're fumbling, you're losing the ball. You're losing all costs when you fumble. You got to trust God. You got to make up in your mind that you're going to trust God. And as you make up in your mind, it reminds me of the old saints. They said, my heart is fixed. Come on. And my mind is made up. I'm, somebody said, I'm going all the way. You about to see one of the greatest ways of glory that you ever seen in your life. I'm telling you, you're going to have to trust God. This is the only way. This is the only way. And as you trust him, you're going to see him. The Bible said, no man should see the Lord. Uh, Listen, when you see what you believe for, you know who that is? That's God. And don't tell me he's in disguise because what you believe for, somebody said just arrived. Now go back home expecting it. I said it, don't miss it now because see, faith is not taught, it's caught. I said it just arrived. When you go back home, look for it. My goodness. You, you're going to have to trust him. <laughs> I said, you're going to have to trust him. It's just that simple. I'm going to rejoice if I have to rejoice by myself. <laughs> Listen, I know it's so. I'm not wondering. I'm not confused. I'm in God. And he said he's not in the midst of confusion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. It's a good day <laughs> to praise the Lord. I'm telling you, you have to come on with it. I got to see it one more time. If I say it again, I just have to add to it. What, when there used to be a bishop in Chicago, he said, you can't make me doubt it because I know too much about it. <laughs> You're about to see one of the greatest ways of glory that you've ever seen in your life. Man, I can feel it coming on. I can discern it coming on. I can sense it coming on. In every direction, there's a wind that's about to blow. The winds of glory. <laughs> My goodness. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Be it done unto me. Yes, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. You, you, you know, it's, it's kind of strange. I was listening to my pastor, and he made the story, so he made the statement. He didn't just tell Mary, you was going to have a baby. He said, you about to birth God. <laughs> Think about it. Jesus is God. He said, you're going to birth God. And Mary said, Be it done unto me. And then she went down to her cousin's house and she said, the, the, the mother, come on, of my Lord, have come to visit me. Listen, we have to listen for God, listen to God, and whatever he tells us to do, do it. And some of this stuff don't seem like it makes sense. It really don't. It really don't. Where God guides, he provides. If you get it by faith, the enemy cannot take it away. Let me say it again. If you get it by faith, the enemy cannot take it away. The lady uh, at Zarephath, 
Not, not the lady at Zarephath, the, 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 the other lady when he told that when he went by the house, she had a lamp and a table and a room for him to sleep in. The Shudamite, that's who she was, the Shudamite woman. He told her, Gehazi, I said, she's been kind to us, and I'm going to close with this. She's been kind to us. Ask her, what does she have need of? They went to her, Gehazi went to her, the minor prophet, and said, my master wants to know, what can we do for you? You've been kind to us. She said, I know the king. I live amongst my own people. In other words, somebody say I'm hooked up. In other words, I think I'm hooked up. I ain't hooked up. I'm, let me say, I'm going to prophesy right now. You ain't hooked up like you're about to be hooked up. He said to her, she said, she's fine. And he said to the Gehazi, the minor prophet picked it up. He said, but she have no child. And her husband is an old man. Like God can't use him. <laughs> All God needs is a little faith, people. All he needs is a little faith. Listen, he said, T tell her to come. This time he wants the little prophet, he wants the minor prophet out the way. He said, about this time another year, you're going to embrace a man child. See, he didn't want to pass words no more. Somebody said it's direct contact now. And it's coming to me. Yes, it's coming to me. <laughs> and when he said that, she said to him, man of God, don't you lie to me. She might have been a sister. <laughs> Just paraphrasing now, because you know how, how I sister. I love your sister, I do. Sister, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Watch this. I think at that point, she saw something so large before her that she said, I got to tell him, make yourself clear now. Say what you're saying. What you trying to say? Say what you mean and mean what you say is what she was trying to translate to him. And he went on and about another year she had that baby. And the Bible said, after a while, some now, so I don't know, so I read one, trans, one commentator said that it was, he's about seven years old. I heard another one say he's about nine years old, so I, I don't know, I hadn't did a study on it. But anyway, he was out in the field working with his daddy. Now this boy came by the mouth of the prophet. That was all faith. See, faith has to be first spoken. And uh, he was out working with his dad and he had a sunstroke and died. And the daddy didn't even bring the boy in. He told the servants to take him to his mama. I wonder why me and I always said take him to the, to the mama. <laughs> anyway, he brought the boy in. She said, put him in the prophet's room. Watch this. On his bed. That's where he came from, the mouth of the prophet. Put him up there. And she said, now go saddle the donkey or whatever he was riding on. And he, she said, pack up some stuff or we may need some water or whatever. And she said, don't yield at the yield sign. Don't stop at the red light. Slag not unless I bid thee. And the Bible said that he, she was coming and the, and the prophet saw her from afar. And he said, something has happened and the Lord has hid it from me. And she got clothes. He asked her, said, is it well with thy husband? She said, yes. Is it well with, with, with you? Yes. Is it well with thy child? She said, all is well. Watch this. And natural, this boy was do not dead. Yes, yes. But she knew where he came from. She ain't down no more now. He said, we're going we're gonna to walk. Somebody said, we're going to walk it out. And as she got to him and he told her what's happened. So for now, I didn't say what he did the first time. He's, again, the minor prophet got involved. He said, take my staff and go lay it up on the boy. And the boy's supposed to live. Watch this now. He came back and said, nothing happened. The major prophet re recognized at that point something ain't right with the minor prophet. I'm telling you, you can be around your man of God and things ain't right. He'll know it. Because if he said it was supposed to work, come on, it was supposed to work. And it didn't work. He knew something was wrong. Something was out of course right there, see. See, you, you can't hide from God. He'll expose you. So I'm going to tell you something. I remember when I first started working with my pastor, it had been some 33, 34 years ago, he said to me, expose the devil before the devil expose you. So the prophet himself went and did mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation with the boy. That's what we call it because he breathed in his mouth. And the Bible said his spirit waxed warm again. And he sneezed and all these different things happened. And he said, take him to his mama and give him something to eat. 
I'm telling you, if it come by faith, the enemy cannot have it. Whatever you're designed of God, get it by faith. Don't trust this world system. Ain't no repossession in this faith. Let me say it again. There's no repossession in faith. Yes. I'm going to say it one more time. Yes. There's no repossession in faith. None. They can't come get your car if you get it by faith. It's possible that it could be paid cash and you didn't pay it. I'm telling you, you have to come to this place where you trust God and know where you've been getting on time. Know this, and I'm going to end with this. The drought is over. I said the drought is over. It is over. Now go get your stuff. Praise God. I pray that you did get something out of this message. We are out of time. If there's anyone out there who have never accepted Jesus as their Lord and person and Savior like to, feel free to do so at this time by repeating this prayer after me. Dear Lord, you know my life. You know how I've lived. I ask you to forgive me. And I receive forgiveness unto myself. And I forgive all others who need forgiveness on my behalf. I believe that Jesus died. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead. And he is my new Lord and Savior. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you went through that prayer, whole heaven is rejoicing with you. Because the Bible said, when one soul is saved, whole heaven is rejoicing. Also, we want to take a moment today to do communion. Yeah. This is the first Sunday we normally do it. So if you have your sacraments, please partake of them. And if there's anybody watching me that was already saved and something in your life is not right with God, just ask him for forgiveness and he will forgive you. Amen. Yeah. On the day Jesus met with his disciples, he took the bread and said, this bread represents my body, which was broken on Calvary's cross. And as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Let us all take it, break it, and eat together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. In the same manner, he took the cup. He said, this cup represents my blood, which was Sprinkle on, the, on Calvary and on the mercy seat for you and for me. And as often as we do it, do it in remembrance of him. Let us all take it and drink it together in remembrance of him. Amen. Amen. And the Bible said they sung a song and they went out. And I'm sure it was a blood song. Hallelujah. However, we want to continue here. If there's anyone out there, who, if you'd like to give, to give online, click the link in the comment section. To give via text, text GNCC in the amount you want to give to 73256. 73256. And while you're preparing your tithe and offering, I want to go ahead and bless them. Father, we thank you that as you receive every tithe and every offering, be accepted. Father, we pray, Lord God, that this seed will cause them, Lord God, to see and understand and know that the drought is over. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you go today, I want to bless you. But do remember we're here on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock for our weekday Bible study. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, as we leave this place but not your presence, I commission the angels to watch over every person to keep them safe from our hurt, harm, and danger. I pray here to protection about them, and I plead the blood over them in Jesus' name. And all the believers said. Amen, and consider yourself dismissed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God.